Hello. On this edition of the program, we'll show you how MTA has made preparations for the winter weather season. Mark Train has a new addition to service for commuters who ride bikes, and we'll introduce you to an employee recognition program to honor MTA's best, all right here. I'm Vern Hartsock. Welcome to Commuter Connections. With the winter weather season here, the threat of inclement weather is always a possibility in our weather forecasts. With this thought in mind, MTA begins preparing for winter way before the season arrives to ensure transit service is there for those who rely on it. Raymond Washington of the MTA Service Quality Department joins us with a look at how MTA prepares for the winter weather season. Ray, thank you for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me. Excellent. Ray, tell us, what is the mission of the MTA Office of Service Quality? Well, our mission is to provide safe and efficient service and get our, uh, our patrons from wherever they want to go within the state of Maryland for, uh, for the most part. Okay, we have the light rail, the uh, metro, and um, our bus service, of course, which is the core of uh, everything. Excellent, excellent. Ray, for those who don't know, uh, tell us some of the specific functions that take place within the Office of Service Quality. Okay, basically, we, uh, as designed, we have uh, the control rooms which communicate with the operators on all the modes. And uh, we have a group of supervisors that are out in the field and we check the routes and make sure that the routes are running on time, efficient. Um, any service complaints that we have, we take care of those. Accident investigations, we, we basically do all of that along with the MTA police. Um, basically, we're just, the, I guess, like they would say one time, the Marines are always the first to go out and say, okay, well, we're more like that. Excellent, excellent. Tell us, is there a component in service quality that communicates with commuters and customers? Yes, well, we have, um, we, anything that happens along the, especially during snow time, okay, we, we have a email advisory and we have the, the internet and anything that we see out on the streets compared to the inclement weather or any, basically any changes, route, uh, diversion routes or whatever, we always give it to the, our information center and they send it out to the public. Well, that's outstanding. Tell us, how many people are part of the Service Quality Office? Wow, um, I'd have to say field supervisors, we have about uh, 15. Mm -hmm. uh, BOCC is another 15, and then you have the light rail control and metro uh, uh, control. I'm not sure how many numbers are there, but it's a, it's a group effort when we go, when we take care of these things. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us, how early in the year does preparation and planning for winter weather begin at the MTA? We start mid-October, about the second week of October, okay. we start uh, preparing ourselves. Excellent. And just how does the uh, MTA and service quality gear up in preparation for the inclement weather? Well, it's a massive uh, team effort, okay? Uh, basically, we get with all the other departments that involve facility maintenance, uh, the shops, uh, we get involved with the uh, city, we try to get involved with the city to see how, what their plan is and we get all our preparation, we get, we put salt in our vehicles, shovels, uh, we have salt at each uh, out of our facilities and we get prepared and whenever the call comes, we're ready. Very good, mm -hmm. that's excellent. Tell us, uh, what should the customers know about how snow affects the MTA bus service and what kind of options for service are available during those times? Okay, what the customer should know is that, first of all, there is gonna be slight delays, okay? Uh, and that we try to keep our buses on their regular routes. Uh, sometimes we might have a route that is not passable, so what we'll do, we'll put them on diversion routes, which they can find on the MTA website. Oh, that's very good. Mm -hmm. 
Tell us, how is light rail affected by these uh, inclement weather conditions? Basically, they're, they're, they are affected the same way. Uh, we monitor their service also. And every now and then they might have problems with the overhead cantonary wire and lose power. So when that happens, we have to provide a bus bridge to transport mm -hmm. the people. I see. Mm -hmm. And Ray, how is um, MTA Metro Subway affected by the inclement weather? Basically, they're affected if it gets uh, above, I say, maybe seven or eight inches, they had the third rail loses power on the upper level of the, um, of the uh, Metro. But now, underground, we can run service from Mundarmin to John Hopkins with no problem. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Tell us again, how can customers get a copy of the MTA Snow Guide? Glad you asked that question. They can go to our website, which is mta.merlin.gov, or they can dial, call 410-539-5000, which is our information center. And they can also listen to updated traffic reports and go to our um, e-advisories. E that's excellent. Okay. Ray, the snow guide, along with what you've shared today, is going to be very helpful for our patrons. I want to thank you for coming on the show and speaking about that with us today. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Have a good holiday. MTA wrapped up 2014 with a few successful and well-received holiday initiatives, which put smiles on faces and warmed the hearts of many in our region. MTA ended 2014 with lots of holiday cheer and several popular and well-received events. In December, families and commuters throughout the area converged on the Mondamin Metro Station to pay Santa and Mrs. Claus a holiday visit and to take pictures with two of the world's most beloved people. Those in attendance love the event. We like the decorations and Santa being here and it's right at the subway station and we're having a good time. Candy canes and an annual train garden exhibit were big hits with everyone at the Mondaman Station for this exciting annual event. Also in December, Santa and a helper greeted MTA bus passengers on the 2014 Santa Holiday Bus just before the big holiday. Transit riders throughout the area were pleasantly surprised to find Santa driving their daily bus line as this specially decorated transit vehicle rotated its presence on a number of area bus routes. The Santa bus, wow, it's awesome. I was surprised coming in this morning to see the bus all dressed up looking good. It's a pleasure. Holiday bus riders were treated to candy canes and a special selection of holiday music chosen by Santa himself for this jolly old ride. MTA police held their annual Adopt-A-Family event held at Arlington Elementary School in Baltimore, where MTA police and employees assisted families with items to help make the holiday season a joyous time. MTA also assisted in the popular holiday efforts of the Maryland Food Bank and Toys for Tots Community Drives, which are geared to feeding the hungry and providing toys for underprivileged kids around the region. Dedicated to serving, MTA looks forward to making a difference in the community in 2015. Coming up next, a look at a new service Mark Rail has launched for bike riders. Stay with us. About a year ago, Mark began Penn Line weekend service for commuters who travel between Baltimore and Washington. Now, weekend Mark riders have an exciting addition to service. In December, Mark launched use of a rail car dedicated specifically for commuters who ride bicycles. The Mark bike car is expected to be a big hit with Mark riders. MTA bicycle and pedestrian planner Patrick McMahon and Brian O'Malley, Executive Director of the Central Maryland Transportation Alliance, join us with more on this new service. Patrick and Brian, thank you for coming to the show to talk about this new initiative. Glad to be here. Thanks for having us. Patrick, for those who don't know, tell us what is the Mark Bike Car? The Mark Bike Car is a old single level passenger car that has been converted to remove half of the seating in there and replace that with a mix of bicycle racks and luggage racks that can be used to transport bicycles along the Mark train, along with passengers. Fascinating. 
Tell us, how did the BART car come to be? Uh, passengers have been asking for the ability to bring uh, full-size bicycles on marked cars for quite some time now. Um, but unfortunately, we haven't had enough passenger seating capacity to be able to accommodate those um, and not displace other passengers. Um, but with the addition of weekend service, um, we've had the ability to, to try out some new things. And then additionally, there are new bi-level cars, uh, bi-level passenger cars that Mark is getting. And those allow us additional passenger capacity. And so now we've got the ability to take some of the single level cars out of service and convert them to other uses. And so um, Mark's chief mechanical officer, Eric Kolig, has taken a couple of the uh, single level cars and converted them to to have a safe and efficient way to transport bicycles. Wow, that's excellent, Patrick. Uh, tell us, which Mark line is this a service available on? And is it part of one train or is it available on all the trains? The bike, bike car is currently only operating on weekend service, which is only on the Penn line. And it's only on selected trains on that. Right now it's on three southbound and three northbound trains each on Saturday and Sunday service. Tell us, is there an additional fee or a charge to board with a bike? No, there's no additional fee or charges to involve with uh, bringing the bicycle on the, the bike car. And tell us, how did Mark bike riders use the service before this feature was offered? Uh, for quite some time, Mark passengers have been allowed to bring on folding bikes, and so there are a number of commuters that bring on their folding bikes every day, uh, either riding to the station or riding from their destination. Um, but there hasn't been any opportunity to bring full-size bicycles on, and so this is really a new thing. Before this, you've had to either drive your bike down to DC or, or, uh, or, or ride your bike the whole way if you, if you wanted to get your bike between the two cities. Oh, very good. Patrick, tell us, how is the bike car situated or designed? Uh, do you sit next to your bicycle? You do have the opportunity to. You, the bicycle car is, is clearly marked on the outside um, with lettering and logos that, that show you both that it is the bicycle car and also where you should enter and exit. There's a single entrance and a single exit and one-way passageway through that. Um, people with their bicycles can roll them through the door um, down the aisle, um, walking next to their bicycle, roll them into the bicycle rack, and the bicycles are secured there by sort of fitting into um, a space and, and also being held by some bars. And then they can sit next to their, sit in the, the passenger seats that are still on the other side of the train and ride the rest of the way with their, with their bicycle. Um, and then when they arrive at their destination, they can gather their belongings, and once the train has stopped, they can stand up, go back their bike out of that um, bike, bike rack, roll it down the aisle towards the exit, and there are signs indicating on the floor and on the walls which way to go where, where the bike, with the bike. Outstanding. How many bikes can the car accommodate, and how many passengers? Right now, the bike, the bike car can accommodate 16 uh, full-size bicycles. There's the potential to expand that up to about 26 bicycles. And there are there's seating for roughly 40 passengers. Very good. Presently, I understand that the bike car is only available on weekend service. Are there plans to extend it to weekday service and perhaps other lines? At this point, we're really just trying out the different opportunities and trying to see how it works out. Um, we know that there is a, a strong desire and interest in expanding to weekday service. Um, but really we want to make sure that we've A, worked the kinks out of the system, and also that we don't do that in any way that's going to displace or cause challenges for our existing daily commuter riders. Um, and so I think there's the possibility in the future based on sort of what, how the service is received, uh, potential funding for additional cars, as well as um, what's the opportunity to do so without, without displacing passengers. That's excellent. We know the service is new, but what has the reaction been to tape? Uh, the reaction in the print press as well as online and social media has been really overwhelming. There's been a lot of uh, comments that are really embracing the service and also asking already for it to be expanding. Um, we've had limited ridership so far, but we really wanted to start out small and, and then been, have the ability to grow it, and we expect that it's going to, that it's going to be a, in high demand in the near future. 
Excellent. Brian, tell us, as a transportation bike advocate, what does a service like this mean? Thanks, Vernon. The, the Transportation Alliance, as well as other advocates like Bike Maryland and Bike More, BWI Business Partnership, I'm aware have been asking for this for, for a while, and we're thrilled to see it happening. Um, to see Mark, which is a very popular service that's seen growing ridership over a number of years, be innovative. A year ago, we saw the, the addition of weekend service. Now we're, we've seen the recent addition of Bikes on Mark. Um, is terrific, and we think it'll be a, a, a great thing for train riders and, and bicyclists. That's excellent, Brian. Can you speak to the various kinds of uses that a feature like this might be uh, used by those who bring bicycles? Sure. This is going to be on the Penn Line, which travels a, a, a very dynamic corridor where there are a lot of destinations that people are interested in reaching. For recreation, you have access to the two cities, Baltimore and Washington. You also have access to the BWI Trail, which is a 13-mile loop around the airport and connects to other regional trail systems. So it's a great opportunity for bicyclists who want to take their bike and get somewhere else and, and, and go for a ride. But it's also a jobs corridor. This is a, the fastest growing uh, part of the Baltimore region in terms of jobs. BWI, Business District, Arundel Mills, Fort Meade, huge job centers where the rail gets you close, but a bike could help cover that last mile or so uh, that gets people to work. And, and more and more we're seeing people with weekend hours. Of course, we'd like to see you know being able to use it on weekdays at some point. But for right now, this is a great start. Outstanding. Brian, do you know of any other rail systems in the region that offer a feature like this? Not, not with a dedicated storage like this. I mean, we, we have seen other commuter rail systems elsewhere in the country. Caltrain comes to mind that offer this. Um, but in this region, no. Um, you can take bikes, for example, on the front of buses. There's a rack. Um, you can take bikes um, on, on some of the, the local uh, rail systems, but not a dedicated storage car like this, like Patrick said, where you have storage for 16 or more bikes. Um, that's really something unique. Ah, oh, very good. Tell us, as a participant in transportation planning and as a bike rider, what are some of the advantages to a service like this being offered in the Baltimore, Washington area? Sure. Well, one thing is, as, a, as a planner we look at is, is it's almost like a watershed around a rail corridor of the places you can get to. And having the ability to use a bike at the, at the station when you get off the train grows that, that area that you can reach. So it's bringing more destinations within reach. For someone who, who's been using the train, they get off, they can walk maybe half mile. Now they can ride one mile, two miles, three miles, and easily get to a whole bunch of, of additional destinations. So it really is, is opening up uh, uh, new destinations, and it's making the, the mark system that's already very useful that much more so. Wow, those are some outstanding benefits. As an advocate, tell us where would you like to see the service expanded in the future? I, I would love to see it on weekdays as well, uh, especially for those commuters who are trying to get to work. Um, I'd love to see it added to the other two mark lines, Camden and Brunswick, and expanded on the Penn line uh, north of Baltimore. Um, I look forward to hearing how you know hearing that people are using this service and Absolutely. then I'm sure that will give Mark ideas about where to take it next. Excellent. Patrick and Brian, I want to thank you very much for coming on the show today and telling us about this very interesting benefit that Mark is now providing to customers with bicycles. Great. Thank you. Just ahead, a look at an MTA employee recognition program to honor MTA's best. Stay with us. MTA is well aware that it's the hard work of dedicated employees throughout the agency that keep public transit services operating reliably each and every day. In acknowledgement of this, MTA has established a recognition awards program to honor and thank its employees for a job well done. The coordinator of this effort, Tawanda Carter, 
joins us with a look at this very special initiative. Hello, Tawanda, and welcome again to the show. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Tell us, just how did the Employee Recognition Awards Initiative come to be? Early part of the year, under the direction of our administrator, he conducted a series of town hall meetings. And as a result of the town hall meetings, we heard from all of our employees. And they recommended that we create a program such as the Employee Recognition Program. Mm -hmm. And as, as a result, this program was birthed. Oh, that's excellent. Uh, tell us, has there been anything previously like this before in the agency? Yes, there have. On various occasions, MTA has had employee recognition programs throughout the years. Very good. Tell us, how are employees selected for the recognition? Well, employees are selected um, from their peers and or supervisors. They submit a nomination form on a quarterly basis, and every quarter, six employees are selected to be recognized uh, as outstanding employees of MTA. Oh, so six employees are selected per quarter. Uh, tell us, Tawana, what is the criteria upon which employees have the recognition? The number one criteria is for you to be an MTA employee in good standing. That's it. Anyone can be recognized. Uh, excellent. When was the first group of employees selected? The program commenced in July 2014, and we recognized the awardees in September of this year. We had a recognition award ceremony in October. What areas or disciplines within MTA did this first group emanate from? Well, we received about 90 overall nominations oh. throughout the agency, with the majority of the nominations coming from our operations departments. So we had three employees from operations, and then we had the other three coming from the administrative functions of the agency. I see. Uh, tell us, Tawanda, what is your role in the process? Are you the facilitator? I am, in fact, the facilitator along with uh, about five other MTA employees that were selected representing various departments throughout the agency. Um, I lead the effort to select and we've ha held various meetings um, and we continue to meet to streamline the process, to improve the process along the way so that it can be the best program there is. Excellent. Tell us, will another group be selected? And if so, how often will this take place? Yes, this program is a quarterly program, and we're in the process of selecting our winners for our second quarter of the fiscal year, which wow. began in July. So early part of next year, we'll be announcing six new winners. Excellent. Uh, tell us, what do the honorees receive as a part of this recognition? Of course, our employees receive notoriety and recognition of being selected as an employee yes. of the quarter, yes. but they also receive personalized charm cards. Mm -hmm. They receive small gifts and a, and a plaque, in addition to an awards, award ceremony where they are allowed to invite their supervisor and a personal friend. Excellent. So what has been the response to the Recognition Awards program? The response is just awesome. I mean, re everyone is receiving the, the program. Um, it's very necessary. It's very needed across the agency. And I look forward to continue to work with the employees at the MTA to continue this program. Oh, that's wonderful. Tell us, is there an intention to perhaps select one overall employee of the year from among those who have received the recognition? Well, actually, uh, the committee did discuss that, and we're moving toward that maybe next year. We have not been in existence for a full year as of yet. Yes. So once we, we reach a full year cycle, then we probably will reevaluate and see if we can actually select one employee to be nominated as MTA's Employee of the Year. Tell us, how are employees selected for the recognition? Well, there are various categories employees can be selected to be our Employee of the Quarter. Um, one of them is customer service, where an employee exemplifies exceptional customer service to our internal customers, as well as our external customers that we see on a daily basis. The other category is job performance. We expect at the MTA that people do their job and do their job well. Right. But not only that, they go above and beyond. This is a special recognition right. from, our pe from your peers and or your supervisors. So it, the importance of doing your job and doing it well, it's, it's a sense of pride within the agency. And part of this program is here so that we can, in fact, recognize that. Excellent. Um, innovation is also um, something that we highly regard in this program. What's out there that we can improve upon, our processes, our finances, or anything throughout the agency that we feel like that we can, can improve to make MTA the best? Tell me, Twanda, can one employee nominate another employee to receive the recognition? 
Yes, this is actually a peer-to-peer -peer program. Yeah. You also can be recognized by a supervisor as well. And um, last quarter, we received one uh, nominee received five recognition nominations from various either peers or supervisors within their department. They were fantastic. Yes. Awesome. Well, Tawanda, I want to thank you very much for coming on the show today and telling us about this very interesting initiative. Thank you for having me. That brings us to the end of another Commuter Connections program. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Take care.